I wanted to take a moment as part of my report and explain to you the, uh, the flagpole uh, concern that has come up over the weekend. And uh, I'll tell you that uh, the, the, the matter has arisen, I think, due to some confusing reporting that has made it appear as though city leadership is enacting a policy that's you know, disrespectful to veterans. Um, that's really not the issue. Um, so let me just sort of frame it uh, broadly, I think, the way that uh, it needs to be framed. Um, as elected officials, we have a responsibility to enact laws, set policy, and govern in ways that serve all citizens equally and fairly. And uh, we find that as the city grows and um, our population becomes more diverse, and sometimes uh, new questions will arise uh, about how the city does things, uh, and that require us to take a look at what we're doing. Uh, how we, and it may not even be policy, but just practice. And it, it, sometimes we're, we're um, put in a position where we have to take a look at what our practices are. And if we find that uh, we have a practice that may have fit the, pol the city's needs in the past, but doesn't fit our needs now, then we, then we have to take action. And that happens fairly frequently. I feel like we're in this growing phase, uh, sometimes I call them growing pains, because it's not always, um, uh, quick and easy to, to update what we're doing uh, when you're having to sort of take entrenched practice and, and uh, fix it or, or change people's expectations of where we are. Well, anyway, I think we're in such a time when it comes to, to this question that we're discussing today. In the past few weeks, a couple of questions have come to the administration about flags and banners. And as the city attorney's office examined the questions that were brought to them, uh, they determined that it would probably be best if the city were to adopt a policy about its flagpoles and how they're used. Um, that's something that we haven't really had before. We just, you know, put up flags and had flagpole, but never really had a policy for the flagpoles. But when you start having lots of groups wanting to, or, or people wanting to find out what their access is to those poles, then we suddenly have to start making decisions. But going back to that principle of we govern for everybody, and we have to govern fairly. Sometimes you need a policy to, to prevent you from being subjective about how you deal with the various requests. Um, so anyway, um, the uh, city attorney's office recommended that we uh, adopt a policy uh, so that we can be consistent and fair as we serve our citizens. Uh, and that seemed entirely reasonable to me. Uh, it will take a while to get a policy, uh, the, some of the, the uh, elements of what that policy should include, to do some research there, to find out you know, what uh, best practices are in other communities and, and probably larger communities that have flag policies, and just kind of bring, be able to bring that to you all at once for consideration. Um, and that, we just barely decided that we should have a policy. We haven't done the research instantly. Um, but anyway, um, that, will, that will come. Uh, I don't know when. I will tell you that time is uh, pretty spoken for this month uh, in terms of meetings and, and uh, agendas being filled with other considerations, and there's just not always time to drop everything else you're doing and chase off on developing a new policy. So it'll be, I don't know, a couple months before we come back uh, with recommendations. But um, in the meantime, the um, attorney's office made an additional suggestion, and I will let Randy explain what that suggestion was about... Um, what we do in the interim before we have a policy, and then I will finish up with a few other thoughts and then take any questions you might have. Yeah, thank, thank you. <clears throat> so one of the things when we were making the suggestion to staff about what to do in the meantime, um, because it will take some time to figure out what we've got and what to do about that. Um, some of the concerns are First Amendment access, whether or not the government is speaking when it uses the government's authority and position to send a message, uh, whether or not we've created a public forum where anybody's allowed in a public forum, like a public square or a park or a street, or whether there's a limited public forum. So it's not sometimes as clear to people who don't deal in First Amendment issues what the answer is. What one answer is, though, that it should be fair and consistent and open, and there should be a, some sort of a process so that any message that gets sent is consistent and fair. Because in the public forum, as you know, not everybody has the same opinion. So for example, um, I've uh, been interested in how much power there is behind the symbol that's uh, the POW MIA flag, 
the POW MIA flag, I asked, well, you know, when did we start putting it up? What are the rules? Was it authorized by council? Um, is it up there all the time? So I asked some of those questions and uh, I haven't got a good answer for any of that. So I thought that in the meantime, um, while we're sorting out the, the process that we would recommend to you and that you would then decide about, we should take that down so that when other people who were interested in having that position on the City Hall main flag pole drive by and wonder, well, why isn't my message up there? Why do they get that opportunity and I don't get that opportunity and I don't have an answer for them other than, well, that's the way we've done it for as long as somebody can remember that it was done. Um, there wasn't a complaint or a frustration or if we haven't answered some group that wanted to have a banner on the, on the city hall, then they could know that we're working on a policy that's fair. Um, it uh, was never meant to be about that particular flag. Uh, the, the, what I know that particular group is that their main focus is only one thing, and that's Vietnam War and people who are either still over there or people whose remains they want to be uh, given to the United States. It doesn't encompass, as far as I know, any other war or any other purpose. And so when, you, when the government starts to focus on a particular message, then that creates some First Amendment concerns. So my idea was, well, let's just take it down for now. I never said to do it permanently. Let the council decide how they want to use city property to, uh, for the government to ex express um, the message. And then that would fit in with the other groups or other, depending on how you want it to do, um, with the other groups that are interested in that location. So that's, is that what's part? So that, that was the rationale behind the recommendation. So what I wanted to point out to you is that, uh, um, and this is going to seem really obvious and I don't mean to be condescending, but attorneys have clients. The city is Randy's client or, or the, his office's client or that's why we employ them, right? Is that because they, they give us advice the way that attorneys give advice to their clients. Um, but we as client, in that, in that kind of a, a, a way of depicting the relationship, um, have the choice as to whether or not we take the advice. Um, the advice is designed to uh, help us be as consistent with the law and be as safe from you know, lawsuits or, or complaints as possible, right? And so um, typically uh, it behooves us to take the attorney's advice. Uh, the attorney has the, the city's best interest at heart, the city as a whole, not any one of our individual best interests, but the city's best interest at heart. And uh, quite often, uh, it's my instinct to take the attorney's advice. Um, however, on, in this particular case, uh, I spent a lot of time on Friday uh, as, as phone calls came and people asked questions and whatever. I, uh, I, I confess to you, I spent a good part of the day on Friday trying to figure out, do we take this advice or do we not take this advice? And um, based on the information I was getting about the recommendation, uh, what I knew about the need for fairness, and I actually agree that we, we have that responsibility to be fair to everybody. Um, relevant uh, law that may or may not govern POW flags versus other flags versus whatever. Um, hearing about how other cities handle these matters or, or other city, I've only heard about one so far, I haven't done had time to do any other research. Um, what the you know need was for our policy, what the requests were, what the plan might be going forward. I just it, it was I was going back and forth. What do we need to do? Um, so anyway, as the afternoon uh, wore on, uh, then a news story came out, and the news story just clinched it for me. At that point, it became clear that in this particular case, uh, it was going to make more sense to leave the flag up uh, than to take it down. Taking it down would ensure fairness and, and perhaps insulate us from claims of being not fair legal claims of not being fair, perhaps a lawsuit about not being fair, but leaving it up, so leaving it up is, is there's a risk, but taking it down had a, a greater risk, and that was that um, it would be interpreted as uh, an uncaring, un insensitive uh, uh, statement toward veterans and or the families of uh, those who are uh, mis still missing in action. Um, they, there's another acronym, KIA, Killed in Action, uh, whose bodies have not yet been recovered. Um, I also know that uh, the POW MIA uh, League uh, is, is 
actively engaged, has been actively engaged in some of the discussions about Korean, uh, North Korea sending back remains, so I know that they're at least engaged in that particular conflict in addition to the Vietnam War. Anyway, there was a lot, there's a lot in play there, but the message was being sent uh, rather broadly that uh, the city was, was you know, interested in being hostile or, or, or not caring about these things. So I thought, yeah, we better walk that back. It makes more sense to keep things as they are until such time as you as council members, who are, you are the ones in power to set policy for the city. Uh, attorneys don't set policy, mayors don't set policy. We might uh, have a role in practice, we might have a role in how things happen until the policy comes. In the absence of a policy, we interpret. But um, in this case, we have already had already prior, you know, determined that a policy was needed. So the stopgap measure is to keep things as they are and um, move forward. So that's sort of where it stands right now, but I just want to make a couple things clear in summary that I've already said, but just make them clear again. First of all, at no time was the flag removed. Uh, secondly, uh, I think I want to make it clear that the city of Idaho Falls is a place that honors its veterans and their service. We have memorials that we care for and, and uh, uh, we have desire to be a, a place where veterans feel respected. And then um, I'll say it again, attorneys make recommendations that are in the best interests of their clients' legal affairs. They do not make policy. Uh, they don't, and I'm, if you were to talk to Randy, he'd say, if I may put words in your mouth, uh, he's perfectly fine with not making policy. Um, but uh, anyway, it's up to the client to decide what to do. And I uh, did not call an emergency council meeting to decide if we were going to take the attorney's recommendation. I simply made a call. Um, it is always in your, the ball is always in your court if you want to, to see a different outcome. But for right now, you can expect that we'll bring something to you in a couple of months after some research has been done and we can make a, a determination then as to what the city uh, could or should be doing there with respect to its flagpole. So that's sort of where we are. Questions? So is there a, a way to research mayor's proclamations from years ago and see if we were proclamated ourselves? as a city to support the MIA POW cause or something like that? Like, that might be why it's there. Sure, there, there's a way to search. Uh, whether there's anything to find yeah. will be another matter. Right. I mean, I, I think um, it's possible <laughs> that, that, that that's been on the flagpole longer than we've kept electronic records. Could be. Um, yeah. So, who knows? Who knows? What I'm, what I'm saying here is I know we're a Purple Heart city, correct? We are. And that requires certain things of us. So, maybe, historically, we have some obligations here we don't. I mean, it's just too early to make a quick decision, in my view. It's a policy research thing, and then a policy. We need to make a policy and take responsibility for that policy. Right. It just takes time to get the data. Exactly. And, and if you're wanting that particular piece of data to be added to the to the pile, sure. Well, I mean, it would make a difference if we had legally said. And we'll find out. This. Yeah. 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 Well, I've been here the longest. Uh, that probably means I'm the oldest, and I am. There was uh, some discussion about flags and the flagpoles, and as I recall, they had put the flags up in a different order. In other words, city flag, uh, the state flag, and then the country's flag, and it was in the wrong order, and we kind of discussed that, and I, there was no written policy but the implication is that uh, those are government flags standing for the elements of government in our country. Um, you know, Cinco de Mayo might want to flag up on that week. The Boy Scouts, when they had a jamboree, want to flag up. And uh, there are different causes that different people could be behind and I think when you do your research, uh, some cities do have policy, and I think you're referring, Mayor, to the city of Mesa, but uh, uh, they have a policy. I think you're going to find that it's governmental purposes for the flag, and, and we honor veterans. I think veterans served this country well in all the wars, even some of them that weren't popular, they still 
served, and we have monuments and and, and so forth. But uh, well, they I'm, serve as government agents. Yes, and I'm not sure we want to be in the flag business, but I'm certainly willing to take a look at other policies that states might have. But uh, uh, sometimes you think you're doing the right thing, but you're taking a shortcut, and pretty soon. You're on thin ice and you can't do anything about it. You're going down. So, just a warning. Okay. Okay. Any other bits of input? I, I have a question. Or, uh, questions. Uh, actually, just, yeah, this is not actually to be a discussion. It's yes. supposed to be QA. Um, this is since so much information was flying around this weekend. So, was there a flag removed from the Apple's library? That's in my I'm uh, not in, in as part of this issue. Uh, but there was one sometime in the past, I understand. I don't know the details of that at all. Okay. But so we don't govern the Idaho Falls Library. Right. That's governed by the Idaho Falls Library Board. And so, um, it, so as of right now, we, the council has had no interaction with any sort of flag related to the Idaho Falls Library, correct? I don't think so. Not no, that we're aware of. Okay. okay, perfect. And my last question for you is, um, how many requests are you aware of that we've received by other groups to place a flag on a flagpole on city property? I had personally had a question about a banner on a building, not on a, not a flag on a flagpole. But I know that uh, to another part of the city, and I don't know who received the call. I, I haven't you know tracked it down. Nor that I don't do. I think I need to. But um, there was a question about a Confederate flag that uh, uh, is flying across the street from the city uh, hall or city annex or from our block. And, uh, and and that sort of led Currently, to uh, it, I saw it on Friday. So. Uh, is it down today? Okay. Anyway, it, it's uh, it, it just it, it elevated the matter. Banners, flags, questions, the whole so, thing become it. Became so the, so so someone had a question about that particular flag, not necessarily a flag on our pole. No, but to my knowledge, nobody has called. And again, Cami has been out, so I, I didn't have direct contact with her. But nobody called the mayor's office and said, "I am upset, or I have a question, or whatever okay. about the POWMIA flag." Okay. That that was just ha that just happens to be there yeah. as an example of a a non, I guess, governmental representing flag. It's it. You mentioned soldiers are agents of government, but anyway, it's. It's, I, I'm not very articulate on this. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. I apologize. No, appreciate right. it. Thank you. Um, so that was my report on that. Uh, any any uh, final questions? All right. So I'm done with that report. And with that, um, I will, yes. Can I just say, if you have any questions, you can come talk to me or Mike. We can talk all about the First Amendment or anything else you're interested in or what happened or whatever. So let me know. Thank you. Okay. And as we go around the table doing your other reports, if any of you have questions of each other, we can definitely clarify anything in your reports. And so I'll turn it over to Council President. Well, I, I don't really have a report. Uh, this